here at Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, we recognize the complexity of this season and are inviting all of us to reflect on our experience of this complicated and uncertain time. Good morning, Lillian. And hello, dear friends, as you are listening along with us in Caring Conversations, this is Pastor Susan here with Pastor Lillian. Goodness, you know, Lillian, as we continue to walk through these days, we're, we're continuing to walk through a pandemic that, um, frankly, is feeling never ending mm -hmm. as we go back and forth with many decisions. And really, you're bringing something to us today that's helping us name the reality that sometimes all of the shifts that this season of life has given us some of them are really small, right? They're really not a big deal, mm -hmm. but yet they are mm -hmm. small things that we have to do differently that really seem to have a big impact on our life and our, just even our way of understanding ourselves, our um, way that we're at church, um, mm -hmm. the way we worship together. But I'd like to invite you to just jump on in with this. Yeah, thank you. And you know, you're absolutely right. They are small things. Um, and I have to say this conversation is me being very vulnerable. And there's a lot of confession that's going to happen here. <laughs> but because part of me feels like, oh, this is so petty in the scheme of what's going on in our world and um, in our in our nation and our you know <laughs> in our counties okay. it feels so petty but it consumes so much of me mm -hmm. and let me share what the topic is so I um, was on Facebook and I came across this post and if you can picture with me it's a picture of two chimpanzees they're sitting on the ground and they're leaning up up against a trunk a tree trunk and one of them, they both actually, they both have their heads down and they're slouched um, with arms crossed. And one of them, you see the, the cartoon bubble that says, I really don't like online worship. <laughs> and then the other chimpanzee beside has another bubble and it says, that's okay. We weren't worshiping you. <laughs> and, you know, so it's a cartoon that it's based on a quote by Francis Chan. And let me just say that again. I really don't like online worship. That's okay. We weren't worshiping you. You know, and the confession part of this is that I don't like worshiping online either. I yeah. really don't. That is not my choice. I grew up in the church. And so I'm so very much used to going into a church building, into a sanctuary to worship. But this little cartoon kind of hit a chord because I realized how self-absorbed I've been. Mm. Um, and that is the small thing, right? It's that, oh, because I don't like online worship. That's supposed to matter a whole lot more than it actually does. Mm -hmm. um, it made me, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, you know, we... This season is filled with ways that we are trying to learn to navigate something new. And even hearing you express that, and I so understand it, right, of this small thing of, oh my goodness, I, and here, here's my <laughs> reality and confession, I could choose to watch online worship, be a part of it on three different screens, right? And that shows you the seat that I sit in and the privilege that I have. And really, is this a big deal? Mm -hmm. But here's where it is a big deal. And I want us to let ourselves have some grace when we are holding and you mentioned, you know, the complexity and heaviness of the world right now. And in this week that we're recording this, we know there's been devastating earthquake in Haiti. There's been a tragic just humanitarian crisis in um, Afghanistan. There's been growing numbers of COVID in counties all around us. And then that just adds to all this tension. Mm -hmm. But the reality is when we faced those kind of big things, we knew we could go to a building to gather together, to worship, to listen, to be together. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, we're kind of rethinking, how do I manage and handle all of that mm -hmm. without this way of connecting with God, connecting with my fellow, um, I'm going to use a few words, my fellow uh, 
friends at church, believers, fellow Christians to do this. So mm -hmm. if yes, it's a small thing, that's a really big thing. And yes. it, it belongs to be, and, and it deserves to be seen and felt. Yeah. Yes. And it, I think it is important for me to also let our listeners know I have been worshiping online since uh, the pandemic started. Right. So that has been my mode. I haven't been able to switch to right. in-person worship. Um, and I imagine that there are many of our listeners as well who have chosen uh, to continue to worship online and to use the live streaming services that we have. Um, and I think it's feeling that um, tremendous shift. Yeah. And recognizing, even though I don't like it, even though I would not have chosen it, um, I've come to a point where I'm wondering if really that doesn't matter because mm -hmm. what matters more is our focus on the Lord. Um, it made me think of my theology professor, um, yeah. Dr. Paul Metzger, who really in first year seminary kind of hammered into us um, that the wrong question that we ask is, how is God relevant to me? Mm. And I think we do do that even in this, in, this is a great example, online worship. How is online worship relevant to me? Um, does it fall, you know, does it, uh, does it coincide with my tastes or, you know, what I prefer and what I don't prefer? Um, and so anyhow, he was saying, that's the wrong question to ask. The right question is, how am I relevant to God? Yes. Um, and, you know, that shift in perspective, I think, is so important for us today. Because as I mentioned, I do feel like in the last um, over a year and a half since we had to go into lockdown and really we went into survival mode, right? So yep. it was me, I have to take care of me and my family. And then it was um, inevitably we became like internalized, right? Well, like we're thinking about us. But what I've realized is maybe one of the unintended consequences is that then we've become so much more self-absorbed. And for us to then ask the question, not how, you know, how is God relevant to me, but how am I relevant to God? It's just an invitation to yes. stop focusing so much on me. Yeah. And more on uh, the invitation is to, to focus on God. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that's a beautiful invitation that you're giving us and the reminder of why we're doing this why we make these choices and what, yeah, our focus. Right. And one reminding, you know, as you were mentioning, well, I've been worshiping online for it, you know, that's been 18 months, right? If not near 19 now. Um, and I know many others have as well. And it's hard to sustain something you thought was short term. And so coming to the time of, oh, this is longer. Right. <laughs> that's right. just... And shifting in the mind of, okay, um, yeah. it, just as you were mentioning, it's moving yes. into a new phase. Yes, and embracing that, you know, that you're right. This was, we got into it, not that it would be long-term permanent, right. um, but it, it's becoming mm -hmm. longer term and it may become permanent. And right. so again, now then we have an opportunity. Um, I was thinking of Psalm 34, 8, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And um, I love the message rendition. It says, open your mouth and taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Yes. Blessed are you who run to him. Mm. And so in terms of online worship, I am hoping that everyone who is listening could also, maybe you resonate with how I'm feeling. I don't love online worship. I did think that it would be temporary and it's becoming more permanent. But here is our invitation, not to think of how much I don't like something, yeah. but the why, why are we even mm -hmm. worshiping? Mm -hmm. Well, our worship 
in whatever format it is, whether it's online or in person, the goal of worship is to taste and see that the mm-hmm. Lord is good and to seek refuge in him. Mm-hmm. Now, let's keep that as our why. Um, and let's keep that as our, our focus. So I know that sometimes during our um, conversations, we offer some practical tips. And so I just have one practical tip. Mm-hmm. If it is hard for you to taste and see that the Lord is good, um, then a simple activity that you can do is to go through the Bible or even Google, Mm -hmm. what are names of God? Mm -hmm. The names of God, you know, there's so many that you could pull a find, Um, but just being able to take time to read through what are the names of our almighty God that we find in the word could help us focus our energy and our thoughts on him rather than on ourselves. So there's a tip for you. Mm, That's a great tip. That's a great tip. Just to see the um, beauty of God through all those names. Oh, thank you, Lillian, for bringing this to us and for just naming something that's difficult, but we can just talk about it. You know, I'm wondering and and sensing, I'd love to invite you to pray for us as we close out today. Would you pray for all of us as we are in this moment? (laughs) Yes, that would be my honor. Let's pray. Thank you. Oh, Father God, you invite us to delight in you. To be able to taste and see your goodness. And sometimes, Lord God, Oftentimes we don't because we become kind of self-consumed. We start to think about all of our own preferences. And um, Lord, I pray that you would forgive us for that. And we thank you, Lord God, that you know our hearts and you know our deepest desires. And we want to say, Lord, today that our deepest desire is to worship you Mm -hmm. and to keep our eyes and our hearts and our minds focused on you. And so guide our steps, guide our thoughts as we leave this time together until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you all. We'll check with you next time.